Hello and welcome to this video series about learning Blender for complete beginners. This course will be split into several videos giving you an introduction to modeling, texturing and making fun scenes in Blender and together we'll be making this scene you can see here. This is for complete beginners that have never seen Blender before or any 3D program for that matter. I'll be introducing new tools and techniques slowly and methodically and giving you challenges to complete along the way to help you learn. I strongly recommend that you follow along to get the most out of the learning experience. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlist and other free resources on this channel for more great content. I've got many free mini courses like this for all different levels and more in-depth paid for options for those looking for more detail. So let's get started making our scene. So where do you find Blender and how do you download it? Well, it's quite simple. You go to blender.org and go to downloads and the latest version will be up here. Download that, install it and you're ready to go. So when you first come into Blender, you should see something like this with this splash screen here, the version numbers at the top, it's also down the bottom corner here. I've got my recent files I've used there. We can open a file or we can start a new type of file such as general animation, sculpting and so forth. We're going to go for general so you can tick on that or you can actually just click away and it will give you the general startup scene. At first, Blender can seem very intimidating. It's an extremely complicated program. So we'll build up your knowledge step by step. And we'll start with what's called the viewport here. So this window that comes across the bottom here and up the top here is our viewport. And in my viewport, I've got an add-on which will show you the keys I'm pressing down the bottom here. The first thing we want to be able to do is navigate the viewport. And for that, ideally, we need a three button mouse. If you haven't got a three button mouse, you can go up to edit preferences under input. You've got emulate three button mouse. You can then tick that, close this down and you can hold down alt and left mouse button and that will emulate the middle mouse button. And that's the same as pressing the middle mouse button, as you can see down the bottom here. So I'm going to turn that back off. Edit preferences, input, emulate three button mouse, untick that. Incidentally, you don't have to save these settings. As soon as you close it down, it automatically saves them. You can actually change that down here to auto save preferences and untick that if you don't want to save them. So middle mouse button will orbit, in this case, our 3D object, but it's orbiting the middle of the viewport. So our viewport here and the cube just happens to be in the middle of that. In order to strafe side to side, we hold down shift and middle mouse button. So that would be shift, alt and left click for those emulating the middle mouse button to strafe side to side. To zoom in and out, we use the scroll wheel. You can hold down control and middle mouse button as well to give you a less jumpy zoom in and out. So that's navigating the viewport with the mouse. So shift middle mouse button and middle mouse button to orbit and middle mouse button scrolling to zoom in and out. Now you can see this red line going across here and the green line going across here. That's our axes, and you can also see those up there. So the Y axis is in green, the X axis is in red, and the Z axis, or Z axis if you're American, is not shown, but it's up and down. We can also actually click on these different axes. If I click on the Z, we're now in top view, the X, and we're in side view, and the Y, we're actually in back view with the Y. If I press middle mouse button, I can come back round to the front, which is here. So the labeled ones are the positive, so that's positive X, positive Z, and positive Y. Positive goes away from the camera, hence why front view would actually be negative Y in this case. You can also click and drag in the middle of these Cartesian coordinates or on a gray area to get that sort of panning mode. As well as that, you have got buttons over here for zooming in and out, so I can click and drag to zoom in and out and click and drag to move the view or strafe around. Underneath that, we've got camera and perspective. If I go to camera, we look through our 3D camera. The 3D camera is important because that's what our finished result or output will actually look through and look like. So if we've got an animation that we've made, when we render it to a movie file, we'll be looking through this camera here. And to come out of camera view, you can just press middle mouse button again or come into the middle here to orbit around again. If I zoom out just a touch with the wheel of my mouse, you can see that camera that we just looked through there. And when I press camera view just here, it will go into the camera like so. So middle mouse button to come out again and let's zoom out just a touch. The other button is switching between perspective and orthographic. So at the moment we're in perspective view. And if I come around to the front here, you can kind of see these lines going off into the distance and it gives us a sense of perspective. If I press this button, they go off really flat. It looks really unusual and difficult to kind of visualize, but this is very helpful for lining things up correctly. But most of the time you're in perspective when you're in any view that isn't straight onto the front, side or top. So if I go to front view, which is this negative Y here, you can see it changes to orthographic mode. That's so I can line my shapes up like this really easily without any perspective. If I put it in perspective mode, it's tougher to see when they're lining up, especially if something's behind this. 
Now keyboard shortcuts are really important in Blender and they'll speed up your workflow, so it's good to get used to them. So instead of pressing these buttons up here for top view, side view and front view, you can use keyboard shortcuts. And for that we use the numbers on our numpad. One is for front view, so you can see the negative Y there. And keep your eyes up here whilst I change them. Three is for side view, so looking down the X axis. And seven is for top view. And we're looking up from the top, down on our object. And all those side, front and top view are in orthographic mode, so they've got no perspective. And if I press the middle mouse button, I can just orbit around again, go back into perspective mode to view my objects. So hopefully you're following along with this. If you're not, just pause the video for a moment to have a go and practice moving around your scene. Okay, so we can navigate the scene, but what about moving objects around? Well, I've got my cube selected in the middle here. I can deselect objects by just clicking away into an unoccupied or blank area of my scene. And we can left click to select objects. We know they're selective and active because they have this yellow outline. So I can click on my light or my camera to select them. I can also box select objects and you can see all three are selected now. So one has a more yellow outline and the others are orange. That means it's the active object which is an important concept to understand later on in your learning journey. Okay, so how do I move objects? Well, let's click on the cube and I can either use the gizmos up here, so move, rotate and scale, but also if you hover over them, you get the keyboard shortcut. It starts off with shift spacebar, which you can use if I press shift spacebar now. It gives me the different options here, which is pretty much this menu over here, or you'll notice it also says G, and that's the one you'll want to move. So G for grab, you'll want to remember. I never use these tools, I always use the keyboard shortcuts. And it's fairly easy to remember, G to grab, and that starts the movement off, and I'm moving my mouse at the moment, then left click to set that movement in place. Again, like I say, you can use the gizmos. If I go to the move gizmo here, I can then click and drag on these arrows, and I can move perpendicular to my camera with these kind of buttons here or the rotate gizmo, I can click on an axis to rotate it round. The scale is the same, you can scale in one direction or click in the middle and scale the whole object. I'll undo all those with Control Z, but I'm going to turn those gizmos off and use the keyboard commands because they're not difficult to remember. G for grab, R to rotate and S to scale. So G to grab to move, R to rotate and that rotates perpendicular to the camera and S to scale. Again, I'll undo those. What you can also do is press G and then X to constrain it to the X axis. Or if I press Y now, it's constrained to the Y axis or Z. I can also, if I move up here and I haven't set it, I can right click to cancel that movement. So G, then let's say Z, and then right click to cancel if I think actually I don't want to move it. You can do the same things for rotation. So R then X, we can then rotate around the X axis. And again, I'll right click to cancel that or scale, and then I can press Z for the Z axis and scale it up and down in just that axis. And again, I'll right click to cancel that. Okay, I'll give you a chance to practice that in just a moment. But first of all, let's add a few objects into our scene. We've got the add menu up here, and there's lots of things in here which will be a bit confusing. We'll only be using the mesh and the lights in this course. And as a beginner, that's all you'll need for now. So let's go to add, then mesh, and we've got all these different meshes. We've already got a cube in our scene. So let's add a UV sphere, as it's called. When I press that, we can see the sphere is right inside our cube there. If I press middle mouse button to move around, we can't really see it, except for its yellowy orange outline, which shows us that it's selected in there. Incidentally, you can see that it's added it in my outline here as well, which has all the items in my scene listed. And it's quite a nice way to select objects in my scene as well. I'll click back on the sphere. So it's currently inside my sphere, so let's move it to the outside. I'll come to front view. Have a quick think about how you can get to front view nice and easily. Well, there's the keyboard shortcut of one on my numpad, or you could have pressed the negative Y up here to come to front view. Now think what I need to press to move my object. So it's G to grab. Let's move it along the X axis, and let's just move it next to our cube just there. Our middle mouse button to come and see what that looks like, and that's great. Hopefully you can see why it's really useful to be able to go to orthographic, so front view like this with one on my numpad, because lining it up was nice and easy. If I'm in perspective mode, it's a little bit more awkward because I haven't got my grid lines there. Also, if I go back to front view, pressing G then X and constraining it to the axis keeps it nicely aligned. Now, whenever I add an object, it uses my 3D cursor, which is right in the center of my scene at the moment, as the point to which it will be added. I can move this 3D cursor by holding down shift and right clicking. So now when I add an object, add and then mesh, let's take a cylinder this time. 
it adds it where my 3D cursor is. So as a quick challenge to you, I want you to move the 3D cursor to a different position and add a cylinder. Remember, shift right click to move the 3D cursor. Okay, so hopefully you managed to add a cylinder in a different location. Now my challenge to you is to line it up with the other two. And my hint is to use side view and front view to do this. And remember, it's G to grab. Okay, so let's go to front view again. With my cylinder selected, I'll press G to grab and move it upwards and across. So there's one of these grid units apart. Not that it makes much difference in this case, but we also need to go to side view to line it up this way. So G then Y in this case, to move it in the Y axis. Remember you can see these axes up here. The green one is the Y. And now it's nicely aligned. If I go to perspective view, we've got it in line. Now what would be nice is if we had a floor for our objects. We can add that by either going to the add menu here, or if I hover over, you can see the shortcut key there, shift A. So let's do that, shift A. And then I've got my mesh menu here and a floor, we use a plane for that. So I'll click on that. And again, it's added it where my 3D cursor is. I'll undo that and I'll move my 3D cursor back into the middle. So I can shift right click to move my 3D cursor, but it hasn't moved it to the middle of my scene, as you can see there, because it actually kind of sticks to objects, which is very useful, but not what we want in this case. Now this might be a tougher one to remember, but it doesn't matter, so you don't have to worry too much. But if I press shift S at the moment, and hold it down, it will bring up this pie menu where we can hover over the different things we want to do. And it's a pie menu for our 3D cursor. And I can, for example, move my cursor to the active object, have a quick think what the active object is. Hopefully you remembered it's the one highlighted in yellow, so I can do that, moving my mouse over to here and letting go. My 3D cursor is now on my active object. Or if I press Shift S again, cursor to world origin, it goes to the middle. Again, don't worry if you can't remember that because I'll move my 3D cursor over to here, for example, and add my plane. So Shift A to add, mesh and then plane, and it's added it where my 3D cursor is. I can remove any movement by using the Alt command, which is kind of like an undo command. And if I press Alt then G, so undo any movement, it moves it into the center of my scene. Okay, so what I want you to do is scale this plane up and move all your objects on top of the plane, or what will be our floor in this case. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so S to scale. We'll add a few more objects in a moment, so I'll make it nice and big. And we'll select our cube, go to front view. Notice we don't see our plane in front view, but I know it's right in the middle on the X axis that we can see in front view because I removed any movement away from the center. So I can press G to grab in the Z axis and move that up to the top there. I could box select these two, but I've got my light selected as well. And that can be a bit of a limitation of box selecting. So I can't just select these two with box select. What you can do is click on one and then shift click on the second to select multiple items. So shift click, G to grab in the Z axis, so the one going up and down and move those up on top of the floor. Just judge it by eye for the moment and that will be fine. And there we have our objects nicely lined up and sitting on the floor. Okay, so the last challenge to you is to add a few more objects in the scene. So Shift A to add, and we can add all these different objects. Don't worry about the grid or the circle because you won't really use those much as a beginner. Try all the different items to see what they look like and line them up in a nice line along the X axis on top of our floor here. So pause the video and have a go at that. So for this, I'll do it nice and quickly. I'll come to the top view to add them and I'll press Shift right click to move my 3D cursor roughly in the position I want my next item in. Shift A to add, mesh, and then we haven't done an icosphere yet, so I'll put one there. I'll start going this way as well, so Shift right click to move my 3D cursor. Shift A to add, mesh, and then cone. One more over here, Shift A to add, mesh, and then torus. And one more over here, Shift A to add, mesh, and then monkey. Okay, so all these are kind of embedded in the floor. Let's go to front view then with one on my keyboard. I can select these three here with shift left click, G to grab in the Z axis and move those just above like that. The torus is a different size, so I'll have to select that separately, G to grab in the Z axis and move that above the floor. Okay, so that's great, we've lined them up. One last challenge then is to rotate the monkey so it's not sort of standing up on its chin and to rotate the cylinder so it's lying on its side and then rotate the torus so it's standing upright you might need to reposition them, so G to grab, so they're again standing on the floor. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll start with my monkey, because that's the toughest, and I'll move in on that object. Now you might find that it's a little bit difficult to center your object. There's a useful tool for 
framing the object. If you've got a numpad, it's the period key on numpad, or you can go to the view options here, which has all your viewport options, so top view, front view, and so forth. You've also got frame selected just there, so numpad period, or full stop we say in Britain. So numpad period, and I will zoom in on that. And now when I orbit, my viewport camera is centered around the monkey. I'll just move out just a touch. Now really I need to be in side view for this, so I can rotate it around the x-axis going along here. That's the x-axis up here. So let's press three on my numpad. But unfortunately, the monkey's hiding behind these objects. So I need to go to the negative x, this side. And notice when I hover over that, you can see it's control numpad three. So holding down control and the numpad number, like side view, gives you the reverse side view, as it were, or the negative x in this case. So I click on that and I come to kind of reverse side view and see my monkey. Now I can press R to rotate and rotate that along the x-axis. If you don't press a specific axis, then it will go perpendicular to your camera, which in this case is along the x-axis. So if I press R then X, it's the same as just pressing R because we're looking down the x-axis. If I press R then Y, it'll go around the y-axis. So we've managed to line it up roughly and then I can press G to grab, move it down, a little bit more rotation just there, G to grab again, and we're there. So R to rotate, G to grab. Okay, so that was the toughest one. Let's try the cylinder next. Now I'm going to cheat slightly because I don't even need to go to side view for this first bit, which is R, then X, rotate it around the X axis, and I could line it up like this, or I can actually just type in nine, then zero for 90 degrees. And that turns it around 90 degrees nicely. I press three to go to side view. I can see the orange outline just there and line it up so it's on the floor just there. Last one was the torus, R, X, 90. Press enter, go to side view, and again, I can see that orange outline, so I can press G to grab and move it above the floor. I could always go to front view as well. Not sure why I didn't do that in the first place. Okay, so that concludes this first lesson. I would suggest if you want a bit of a practice to move all your objects on top of each other, one on top of the other. Hope you're enjoying it, and I'll see you next time.